Hey everyone, it's Bethany. You might have noticed that we are at the end of our OT binder, so no more worksheets for the rest of the school year. But today we will have an obstacle course activity to collect the, um, the items that we need for cereal box puzzle art. So I've got the front of my strawberry awake cereal. Parents, you can help by cutting out just the front picture of the cereal box. Whenever you're picking um, which box to use, most cereal boxes are a little bit um, more on the flimsy side rather than the more firm cardboard. You don't want a cardboard that's too firm or else it will be really difficult for your child to cut. So that's the first thing that we'll need for this activity is a cardboard picture. You could also use um, a picture from the cover of a magazine if you don't have any cardboard pictures handy. So here's my picture and then we'll also need a blank piece of paper. I'm actually using the back of another piece but I'm going to use my white piece of paper. We're going to glue the pieces onto that later. We'll need glue, a black or a dark colored marker or crayon is Fine. Just watch out if you use a um, magazine page, you don't want to use a washable marker on a magazine page or else it will make a mess and get all over. Scissors for cutting and then either a ruler or a straight edge. The first thing I'm going to do is show you a little obstacle course that I set up. I just rolled up a towel for a balance beam and then I laid my yoga mat out and I'm gonna pretend my yoga mat is lava. So I don't wanna to touch that whenever I go over. Um, let's see if I can get my camera set up so it will stay. I'm gonna put all of my supplies on one side and then my table is on the other side. So I'm gonna go through the obstacle course, get a supply and then go back through, I'll probably just walk because I don't want to go through an obstacle course with scissors in my hand. So, all my supplies on this side. And I've got six supplies over there, so I'm going to get two at a time. I'm going to walk on my homemade balance beam, and then I'm going to put feet one on either side, hands one on either side, and then walk across the lava. Get two of my items, and then back again. This time I'm going to put two feet on this side, two hands on this side, and then like a bridge. Back to my balance beam. Just be careful with those scissors. Once you've collected all of your items, head on over to the table and I'll show you how to make cereal box puzzle art. So now we should have all of our items at the table and I'm gonna show you how to use them to make your own puzzle. The first thing you're going to need is your cardboard um, cereal box cover. We're going to turn it over so that the blank side is showing. We're going to take our rulers and then just make some random straight lines. It's up to you how many lines you want to make. The more lines you make, the more pieces your puzzle will have. Whenever you are making your lines, make sure that one hand is holding your ruler down nice and firmly, and the other hand is free to draw the lines. I'm getting a tiny bit of marker on my fingers here, but that's okay. I'm 
Hmm. I think that looks good for me. Let's see how many sections. One, two, three, four, five, six. I just made six different shapes on the back of my cereal box. So my puzzle won't be too hard. Then what I'm going to do is take my scissors and I'm going to cut across on the lines. Cardboard is a little bit tricky to cut, so it's going to help to build the muscles in your hands. Make your hands nice and strong. The longer the lines, the harder it's going to be. Shorter lines are easier for the two hands to work together. So parents, if you're helping your children out, it might be a good idea. So this line is pretty long. Parents might want to cut the longer lines and then leave the shorter lines for their children to cut. Remembering that our thumbs go up when we cut and we're cutting away from the body. Once we have all of our cardboard pieces, we can flip them over so we have an idea of where each piece will go. And then we need our plain background sheet. You don't have to use white, you can use any color construction paper you'd like. If you want to think about what color might look good with your cereal box colors, you can try to match or try to pick a color that you think will look nice. And then we are just going to build a puzzle. I'm going to put the pieces on my page first so I know where they go. And then once I know where they all go, I'm going to glue them. There we go. And it's up to you for your art if you want to put all of your pieces tight together so there's no spaces, you can do that. Or for your art, you can leave a little bit of space in between so that there's some gaps. I think I like some gaps in my picture. So I'm gonna glue my pieces down one at a time. Oh, I'm almost out of glue, so we'll see if it lasts all the way through. I like to put the glue on the back of the piece so that I know that I've gotten around all the edges. So I'm just going to go around the different shapes around the edges. Oh, I got a little on the table, that's okay. Again, this is a good activity for two hands at the same time because one hand has to hold the piece in place while the other hand puts the glue on. Oh, I don't think I'm going to have enough glue. Really scraping the bottom here. So you can see, I've got two pieces left that I still need to glue, but you can see how I left some gaps in my art so that it has kind of a border around the pieces. It's up to you for yours if you want to leave gaps or if you want to put them nice and tight together. Um, but whenever you're all done, you'll have a fun cereal box art picture. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, so for the rest of our OT, we won't be doing worksheets. We'll just be using items from around the house to work on those fine motor skills, bilateral skills, using two hands together, the visual motor skills that we need for um, handwriting. But no more worksheets, just things around the house to keep us um, 
working on all those underlying skills for handwriting. Thank you all. Feel free to send me any questions via email. Um, you should have my number as well too. I'm happy to help out if you need any more help.